Hey guys, hey, welcome back to another Carl's Garage video brought to you by Straight Outta Content. Welcome back, family. Appreciate you guys tuning in. Uh, if this is your first time tuning in, uh, to let you know a little bit about this channel, we keep things basic. That stands for business, automotive, sports, investing, and creating. And today we're doing an automotive video. Today's video is on automotive. So today we are gonna change the oil in my 2015 Kia Optima. So if you don't know, I have a whole series on this Kia. Uh, it's called the Kia Engine Settlement. So please go check out those videos if you haven't already. But today we're gonna change the oil in my Kia Optima. I'm gonna show you guys how to do it properly. So let's go ahead and get into the video. Okay guys, so I don't know if you've seen any of my other videos, but actually go check out some of my other videos where I uh, changed the auxiliary fan, where I changed my brake rotor, where I changed the uh, headlight bulb, and check out my video where I changed my spark plugs. That one was a really good video. We found out a lot of information uh, about this car with those spark plugs. So after I change the spark plugs, I want to change my oil. So today I like to use synthetic motor oil. The reason why I like to use synthetic motor oil because this is the top quality uh, oil that you can put into your car. Now, yeah, my car is about 120,000 miles on it and I bought it with about 73. But ever since I purchased the car, I've always put synthetic in it and it's been making the car run extremely well. I am not sponsored by this company. The only reason why I bought this brand of oil is because there was a discount on it at uh, my local auto. So it was this bottle right here and this filter for 27 bucks. And because I have an AutoZone's rewards card, again, I am not affiliated, because of an AutoZone's reward card, uh, I had 20 bucks on there. So this, this, and my spark plugs only came out to 54 bucks. You can't beat that. But today I wanna show you guys a little present that I got here. And I'll put the link to this oil filter remover in the description below. Let's see, it's actually my first time. See, the, the tape is still on it. Ooh-wee! Because I'm gonna show you guys, it's very hard getting this dang oil filter off in this Kia Optima, because there's so much plastic underneath. But with this baby right here, ooh, look at that. She is fresh. Mmm, smells good. Yes, this tool right here is a main tool that you will need. Yay! A uh, tool that you will need when getting off that stupid oil filter. Okay, so this is a brand new oil filter removal tool. You see, it's still got all the nice oil on it to keep it nice and lube. So you go pretty big and get a pretty big oil filter. My oil filter is about this size. So let's go ahead and start with the process of changing your oil on your Kia Optima. My car is a 2015, but this should work on most Kia Optima. First thing you wanna do is, come on over, camera woman. You wanna take off your, I mean your, oil, your oil cap, you wanna remove that. Okay, this way, whenever you remove the drain plug at the bottom, uh, there's not a vacuum. It's just gonna go right out. As you see down here, I've already jacked my car up and I put um, a jack stand underneath so that whenever I get underneath my car, I'm extremely safe. So you put this right here. First thing that we wanna do is we want to take off the oil filter. So first thing I like to do, I like to remove my oil filter and this way I know that, because there's not gonna be a lot of oil that drains out of it. So I like to remove my oil filter and check it first, make sure that you know, there's no metal shavings in it and that I'm able to get the new oil filter on. God forbid you get the guy at the store hand you the wrong oil filter and then you change the oil and then you go to do the oil filter last and then you've got to go back to the store with a dirty oil filter. So you never want to do that. I always change my oil filter first. If that works, then I know that the oil going into the car next is going to work. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, guys, so now we're underneath my car. The first thing that I want to do is remove the oil filter. Um, these Kias, they come with so much plastic, as you see, it usually comes with plastic here, but I actually had an accident and the plastic was actually ripped off. So you can drive your car without that piece of plastic right here. It actually saves time. Um, I plan on getting it, but it's not really a necessity right now. The biggest piece of plastic that you're going to have to remove is right here. But I think that I can successfully get this oil filter off in here, uh, cause it's right here without having to remove all of this plastic. Um, if you do need to remove it, it's just some small uh, 10 millimeter bolts that you can use to just remove it. But I'm gonna see if I can get it off without it. So I wanna grab it and turn it. Yep, I was on there very easy because I was the last one to put it on. You just wanna turn it and let it drain. 
And while it's draining, you wanna get your other new filter because you never wanna put on a filter dry, okay? Yep, and this is a really good filter. It comes with this nice piece of plastic on it. It's really good quality. Oh, look, it says it's good for 10,000 miles. So that's, that's, that's really good. That's a really good filter. Of course, I like to change my uh, oil, whether or not it's high mileage or synthetic, you can probably get, you know, up to 5,000 miles out of it, or maybe 10, but I like to do mine between three and 5,000 miles because I drive a lot. So what we want to do is we want to get some of this oil on there. And then, oh, once you get some oil on there, let's go ahead and cover this. I don't know if you guys can see that. What you want to do is dab some oil on there and get that ring nice and lubed up. You never want to put this dry ring. You never want to put it on with a dry ring. You never want to do that. It won't seat properly. You need to put some lubrication there. Okay? And you use that with the old oil. That's fine. It's not going to hurt or, or anything like that. Now, some people like to fill up their... Um, oil filter with oil. I'm not a person who likes to do that. Not that it's bad. I totally recommend. I mean, go ahead. If you want to do that, that's fine. It's not going to do anything. Um, I just like to just go ahead and put it on there, fill up the car with oil, and then start the car. And I've never ever had any engine issues by doing that. Now, maybe if it was a race performance car, you might want to do that because you don't want to start the car with a dry oil uh, filter, but that's fine. I'm not worried about that. So put that to the side. So that we have his least mess. All I'm going to do is spin it and it should drop. Perfect. Take that dropped off of there. Let me get some rags. Okay. Let me stick this on here. You want to make sure. Also, a tip that you want to do is I can't see up in there right now. So what I want to do is check the old filter. Pour it out. Bring it over here, wipe it off a little bit. Okay, so you wanna check the old filter. First thing you wanna check for with the old filter is, and it's very heavy because there's so much debris inside. First thing you wanna do whenever you're checking the old filter is make sure this gasket is still on there. Sometimes, with, especially with a lot of older cars, this gasket, because somebody tightened it so much, will still be on the car and you'll pull this off and be like, yeah, sure. I can stick on the new one and then it'll be two gaskets and it won't seal properly and you'll have engine failure because oil will be leaking, you'll be driving. So my gasket's on, there's nothing wrong with it. It's pretty good inside. I don't see any metal shavings or anything. So yeah, this oil filter did its job. This is all nice and lubed up. It's all nice and shiny. So let's go ahead and install it. You only want to hand tighten it. You never want to use a tool to tighten your oil filter. I got really good grip gloves on, so this thing, I can really grab it and tighten it really well. Oh. Yep, good hand tighten. Okay. Okay, she's in there. Now let's move on to the back to get the uh, oil drain plug. Okay guys, so now it's time to take off the drain plug. And we're gonna use a 17 millimeter socket. I don't know if that's in focus, but we're gonna use a 17 millimeter socket. Now, this isn't the same for all cars, uh, especially it could be different for your car. Your car might've had its drain plug changed to a 14 millimeter, but my car is uh, still the same drain plug from the factory that I assume. And uh, we're gonna use a 17 millimeter. So let's go ahead again. I don't have to take any of this plastic off. I'm able to really get to it. So it's right back here. So I'm gonna, Take it off, then I'm gonna remove it by hand and then let it drain into this, the drain system. So you wanna put the drain pan in a position to where you can still access the bolt. Okay. So, now that we got that loose. You do not want the drain plug to fall into all this oil. I promise you, you do not want that. It's gonna shoot out that way. So I'm gonna position this very slightly. I know it's not gonna come straight down, so I can kind of angle it out. because I know it's gonna wanna shoot out and the car is leaning that way. So what I'm gonna do is 
I'm going to just yank, pull on the, um, turn the drain plug. And make sure that I pull this drain plug out. You do not want the drain plug to fall into this oil. You'll be searching. I mean, you can always use a magnet, but you just don't want that. And I'll spare a little oil on my hand versus having to search for a drain plug. There we go. Get my rag. Got a little, little mess. Make sure you mop up. Clean up your mess. Now I can pull the pan a little closer. And we just let that oil drain. Clean this up. It wasn't too bad. A little oil on your driveway is not bad. Another thing that we want to do while the oil is draining, check your drain plug. Look for debris. Look for any metal shavings. This is a magnet. It should be. It should be a magnet or magnetic so that it'll literally, you know, it, it's it's designed to be like that. So if there are any metal shavings in your car, they'll be stuck to this. And then you'll know like, damn, something's wrong with a rod bearing or something's wrong with a rod or something like that. So luckily mine's clean. So I'm gonna go ahead and wipe it off. Nice and clean. The washer that's on there is still very, a little washer right here. So still very good. And we just let it sit. I let my car drain for a while. So we'll come back once it's done, once it's done draining. Okay, guys, we're back. And as you can see, there's no more oil coming out of the drain pan. And what I was just explaining to my wife was that she was asking why it takes so long. And I said that, well, those other places, those five minute places and those quick, quick oil change places, those places, they don't let your oil drain out that long. <laughs> they will just wait till it's a small stream and then stick the drain plug back in. Me, I like to wait till all the oil is drained out so there's maybe only a couple of drops coming and then I stick the drain plug on. So that's exactly what we're gonna do. So let's go ahead and do that. You always wanna make sure that you stick the drain plug back on by hand. So because there's only a couple of drips, I'm not worried. I can stick this up in there. But before I actually uh, tighten it down, I wanna move my oil pan, because we're gonna be recycling this oil. We're gonna be pouring it back into our uh, big canister of uh, fresh oil. We're gonna pour the fresh oil in the engine, then we're gonna pour the old oil in that and take it back down to our local auto zone, and then we will recycle it. Uh, wipe off the drain plug, because God forbid, you forget to wipe off the drain plug and then you say, oh man, there's oil dripping on my floor from my oil change. Well, chances are you probably didn't clean up after yourself. Turn our ratchet to the right on. It's already hand tightened, so we're just gonna turn it. You, again, you do not wanna over tighten your drain plug. You could strip it and cause more damage than, than you think. So just go ahead and get, just give it a nice snug fit and it'll do its job. There we go. Okay, there we go. That's it, so let's go up top and let's pour the new oil in. What I'm gonna do now though, so that the, uh, the, the level is proper, I'm going to remove the jack and, and make sure that the car is even. Right now the car is leaning back. So if I pour the oil in it, I'm not gonna get an accurate reading for how much oil is in the car. So let's go ahead and drop off the, uh, the car from the jack stands and then let's pour the fresh oil in it. Let's go. Okay, so we removed the oil filter, replaced the oil filter, Drained out all the oil, removed the jack so that the car is nice and even. Now it's time to put in the fresh oil. Let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so I removed my cover. This way I can just get a little better pour. I need to go through and clean all this engine, but also a little quick tip. If you don't know what type of uh, engine, I mean, if you don't know what type of oil your engine calls for, it's right here on the cap. A lot of the new cars, um, they will have what type of oil your engine needs right there on the cap. So just in case you don't know, whenever you pull up to the auto store and you say, oh, dang it, I don't know what type of oil I need. You can run back out to your car, pop your hood, look at your cap, and it should be there. And we have that 5W20. So let's go ahead and pour it in. I like to pour from the side. Sometimes you get a better pour and you just gotta, and that's fine that it, all it's gonna do is shine up your engine a little bit. I know how much this engine calls for. It's gonna call for this whole um, five quart. Well, there's about four quarts. So it's, it takes about four and a half. 
and I have another quart of oil to my, uh, to my right. So you wanna pour all of this oil in, let it sit for a second, and then you want to check the dipstick to make sure what uh, level it's at. Because even if it's full on the dipstick, uh, don't forget that you still have a uh, oil filter that doesn't have any oil in it. So once you start the car, some of that oil that you poured into the engine is gonna go to the oil filter and it's gonna make your dipstick probably about a half a quart low. That's okay if a little oil spills over it. Okay, and remember do not throw this away because we're gonna put our old oil inside. Okay, you wanna get your rag because I made a little bit of a mess. And guess what this is? You don't wanna push this back into the engine, okay? You know it looks, you do not want all these different particles going back into the engine, so be very careful when cleaning. You wanna push away from the hole. You do not want that debris in your engine. You'd be surprised what these small little things can do. So you just wanna clean it. Now what we wanna do, I'm gonna pull the dipstick and check. Always wipe it off first, because that's the first time is not a good reading. Stick it back in there. Pull it out very slowly. You don't want oil flicking everywhere. What are we looking at? It's a little past full. And what we're gonna do now is, because I know that there's four quarts of oil in the car, we're gonna start it. Now, when we start it, when we start the oil, we're gonna see some color because there's still, you know, old oil all over this, uh, all over the, the cylinders and everything. So that oil is gonna tint the fresh oil so that we can see it, okay? So let's go ahead and start the car. I'm gonna put the cap on. We're gonna start the car for about a few seconds, make sure there's no leaks. And then we're gonna come back and pull the dipstick and I promise you we'll be able to see. Okay, so I'm gonna check underneath the car. No leaks, I'm gonna turn the car off. No leaks, I'm gonna turn the car off. I'm gonna check the dipstick again. Oh yeah, you can see now, it's about a quart low. Can you see it? Yep, see, so we need to get it up to this fill line. So what we can do is, let it sit for a second. That's why I always buy an extra quart of oil. So whenever you're filling up your Kia, now this four quart, this jug, whatever size you get it in, is not enough for your car. You always wanna get this and another quart, and I have another quart. Oh man, what are you doing? You have another quart, it's not the same brand. It's just regular, high mileage, 5W20, what are you doing putting it in there with that synthetic? Hey, well guess what? My car has a lifetime engine warranty. So <laughs> no matter what happens to this car, my engine is covered. Why do I have a lifetime engine warranty? Well, go back and check out uh, part series one through five of the uh, Kia engine settlement. Yes, so if you don't know, and you're watching this video, just randomly watching oil change videos, this car has a lifetime engine warranty. The reason why is because it's part of a Kia engine settlement. And this goes for Kia uh, Optimus, Kia Sportages, and Kia Sorentos. There's a, a class action settlement that'll be settled in November for 758 million, I think. And uh, yeah, my wife took this car because it needed a knock detection sensor software update. Once I got that, I am now uh, have a lifetime engine warranty. So I'm going to put this oil, even though it's mixed a little bit, di little bit different, it's not gonna hurt it guys, okay? It's just a quarter oil. This isn't a performance car, it's just a regular economy car, okay? So unless I was running like a super turbo or something like that, or supercharger, or you know, high compression engine, you're not gonna ruin your car if you put a quart of a different, you know, non-synthetic high mileage oil in with your synthetic. All you're gonna do is just downgrade your synthetic just a little bit. I'm not that worried. But just in case there's all those sticklers out there, what is he doing? No, I'm not worried. This was $4 on the shelf, and there's nothing that I can do to this engine because they're gonna cover it anyway. Now, again, I'm not gonna be an idiot and put 10W30 heavyweight diesel oil in this. That's dumb. It's still the same grade oil. It's just a different quality. That's all. It's like having 93 premium gas in your gas tank and then you get it down to half and then you put the regular gas in your gas tank. It's not gonna hurt the car. Let's go ahead and finish this off. So we saw it was about a quart low, almost a quart low. So I'm gonna put about three quarters of a quart in here. And we wanna get it right to that line. So I'm almost about three quarters of a quart. Okay, you wanna let that sit, let that get all the way down to the bottom. Because you're pulling, your dipstick is from, the, is from the oil pan, from the bottom of the oil pan. So if you don't let it sit and you pull it immediately, you're gonna be like, where the heck is the oil? Well, you gotta give it a second, let it get down to the bottom of the oil pan. Look at that, where's that at? You got it? You see it? See the F, see the low, full right there. It's almost a little bit past. Now, what some people can do, if you 
have a car that burns oil. Maybe you have the turbo version of this car. Maybe you have the turbo version of this car. And you know that you're, so if you have the turbo version of this car, I have the 2.4 liter naturally aspirated engine. If you have the turbo version of this car, your car probably takes more oil because the turbo has to be cooled with oil. So it might require a little more oil. The point of this that I'm making is you might want to pour the rest of this in there because you know that your car burns oil. My car doesn't burn oil. We a little bit on the spark plugs, but not much. It does not burn oil like that. So I can leave this in the back of my car just in case. But as of right now, my car does not burn oil. But some cars are known for burning oil. A lot of European cars, a lot of Mercedes, a lot of Audis, a lot of BMWs. Those cars are known for burning oil. So putting a little oil in over the fill line is okay in that application. In this application, I'm right there. I'm right where I wanna be. That's where I'm going to leave it. There's no need to put the rest of this in there, but there are some uh, circumstances to where you might want to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and put the cap back on there. We know it's full. We already heard it run. There were no leaks. I think we're done. Let's go ahead and put the cap back on there. Okay, guys, there you go. That's how you do an oil change in a Kia Optima 2015. This should apply for all the Kia uh, Optima models. This should apply for the any uh, the Hyundai version, the Elantra and stuff like that. There just might be a few different things. There might be a few different oil weights and stuff like that. But guys, thank you. Please make sure that you check out all my videos pertaining to automotive and learning how to grow your YouTube and basically anything to do with our slogan BASIC, which stands for Business, Automotive, Sports, Investing, and Creating. Um, I love making these videos for you. For all the fans out there who have been contacting me about the Kia Settlement Series, please, I got a lot more information coming. We're going to be doing a lot more things to this car. Thank you for watching and tuning in and being great fans. I can't thank you guys enough. The channel is growing really fast. We're pushing 400 subscribers. You know I'm really trying to get to that 1,000 subscriber mark. Please help me subscribe, subscribe, subscribe so that we can get to that 1,000 subscriber mark, guys. I am hungry. I am tired. And it's time to go shoot for Flash Custom Designs for our merch company and everything. We're about to go shoot her contact. So make sure you guys go check her out. She'll be somewhere around here, but she'll definitely be uh, linked in this video down below. Guys, I love you. Be safe. Be basic.